D1 is made up of two separate layers, layer one and layer two, as you can see here. And these can either be a PCM or sample sound and an oscillator, like your typical synth oscillator. Whoa, have you heard that sound before? If you don't know how to get that sound, stay tuned for a later video because it's an Easter egg hidden in D1 and I'll show you how you can get this extra digital D1 sound. First thing we were gonna wanna do is expand this so you can see everything and I'm going to create a new preset. So when we start with a new preset, the synth mode on on both layers and the harmonic filter is off. This is a per voice filter and it's separate than this filter. So this doesn't have to be on for you to add this on, which makes for really nice sound design tools. So you've got this per voice filter, and then on top of this, you have these filters as kind of master filters to go through. So basically you have your oscillators or your PCM, then you have your ADSRs, then your harmonic filters, and then your master filters, and then your effect chain. So let's start with this. This is your standard ADSR that you'd see in any synth. As you can hear, it's just a simple sine wave. Your attack decay, sustain release, that should be self-evident. And then you have your semitones. You can go up and down an octave. And then your detune goes plus or minus one semitone. So if it's all the way up, this is gonna be up one semitone. And if it's all the way down, it's gonna be down one semitone. If you're having trouble getting it back to zero, you can just double tap it and it will go to the detune setting that was last saved. Coming over here, we've got your sine, square, triangle, and saw. And then you've got two different models. You've got this retro, which has some noise and grit and a little bit of aliasing. And then this clean mode, it's a more digital sounding more like a soft synth and less like a real hardware digital synth, whereas this has a little more character like a classic hardware digital synth. And the note range, you can do this for keyboard splits. Let's say you wanted a split and wanted bass in the bottom and a piano at the top. So if you have this at 60, and you had a sine wave down here and a saw up here, Put the layer mix halfway through. Make sure the volume is up on both these. You can see the keyboard is split. Maybe you want the bottom to have like a little sub, negative 12 here, but not in the top. You can do that as well. So you got your per voice filter and key tracking is 100%, which means when you have cutoff at zero, zero, it's always gonna be the frequency of the note. So if you have A at 440, this cutoff is gonna be at 440 as you go. So it's gonna track the keyboard to the same frequency of your notes. Your strength here. You can set key tracking anywhere from 100% to completely off here. This allows an advanced level of precision for your sound design. So if you're not hearing the filter, make sure it's on. I know this can be kind of hard to see. I apologize for that. Now you may be thinking, okay, I love these synth sounds, but I want to use some samples. So you just click on this PCM. You can toggle this button back and forth between synth and PCM. All the sounds you have available will be in this picker here. And you can play it like a roulette wheel and like choose one. Or it's easier to actually go to this PCM panel and you can see the ones you have. You'll have at least two PCM cards here that come with Digital D1. And you may have this third one depending on when you bought it. And that delay you're hearing, it's actually uncompressing the sounds. So with the expansion, 
there's over one and a half gigabytes of sounds and it's compressed down to a couple hundred megabytes so it doesn't eat up your iPad space. But because of that, it needs to unpack the sounds. So that delay is that uncompressing that you're waiting for. So we can choose one and click done here. And now we have a new one here. Before I go, two big tips about sound design. One, have fun and forget about the rules because so many people have certain things they do when they get into a habit and then all their sounds start to sound the same. And number two, all sound design is open source in a bit in that you can see everything that makes a sound. So as you go through these presets, you can see how they made them. And a lot of the sound design is right here on this layer panel. And you can see their envelope settings and what their source samples are. Think, oh my gosh, I really love this sound. I wanna make my own just like it. You can go here, copy it, start and use that as a starting point to make your own kind of sound based off that. If you want some more sound design tips, there's a really great video by Nutrix the Synth Guy. I'm gonna go ahead and link to it in the comments here and check it out. And with that, let's head to the FX panel.